Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs and today I have week three of my 12 weeks of Christmas cards to share with you. Yes, I'm wearing the same outfit because I am batch recording these, uh, trying to get a little bit ahead because I have some new things I want to create for the end of the year going into 2024. So I'm trying to get a little bit ahead on everything and that's always just a bit of a challenge. But this is the fourth or sorry third card in my 12 weeks of Christmas series and it turned out I think adorable you guys know that I really like a non-traditional Christmas color palette so this kind of white pink brown and gold really came together in a fun way and I, I just love a mini slimline card you can never go wrong with a mini slimline card so this is this week's card let's jump right in all right, so to start, I am going to create my mini slimline base, which I like to cut down to a six by six inches, and then I score at the three inch mark. I have seen other people add like another quarter inch onto that. I don't just because I find this is the easiest one to trim, um, but you absolutely can if that's something you enjoy doing. I know um, Amy from Prairie Paper and Ink does, but I do not. So totally up to you. I like to do the six by six and then score at the three inch mark. And then here I was cutting down a white mat because I thought that I would do a different color palette than I ended up choosing. So that's why you see that right there with the uh, white layer. But in the second here, you're going to see that I changed my mind and I turned this card into a pink and gold card instead with the brown for the gingerbread. Uh, but that's why there is a white mat here. I originally thought that I would do a completely different color palette. So I kind of started my card with that in mind. And then as I kind of got going, I was like, nope, this is totally going to be a pink and gold card. So that is where I went with this. And this is why you're going to see me now cut down a gold mat instead. And here I always like to do my layers about an eighth of an inch smaller than each other. I like a really thin layer. Uh, so of course my base is that three by six inches and then everything else is an eighth of an inch smaller than the base. And then we're going to start die cutting a whole bunch of things. These are some really cute gingerbread men from Spellbinders. It's a really cute die. It gives you two bodies and two faces. So you can kind of have like a his and hers or however you want to do it. You could do it however you like. And then there's a whole bunch of little pieces that kind of dress them up. So there's like a little dress and there's a scarf and a hat and a bow. And a, there's just a whole bunch of little details. And there's also um, like squiggles for frosting. So you can like <laughs> dress up. You're going to see it because I'm going to use a whole bunch of them in this. And I did end up needing to save the face pieces. It's going to be similar to the figgy pudding card we did on Monday of last week, um, where I kind of like stuck the little pieces back in the face and colored them separately. So we are going to do that again, just because I found that to be the easiest way to work with the face. You could adhere something to the back if you wanted to, but that kind of recesses the pieces. So I didn't really like that. Um, so this is kind of just what I decided to do. And you're going to see me here <laughs> struggle for a second because I couldn't decide. I knew that I wanted the card to be white and gold predominantly, but then I couldn't decide what pieces to make white, what pieces to make gold and what pieces to have be pink. So I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit. That's why you see me kind of bringing in different pieces of cardstock because I couldn't decide if I wanted the bow to be pink or if I wanted her bow to be gold. I think in the end I decided to make her bow, her bow gold and his scarf white and gold. Um, and then there are just other elements that are pink. And of course the gingerbread, I'm going to ink blend brown because they're gingerbread cookies. So obviously they would be a darker color. Um, so that's kind of what I was thinking with that. And then these are just the little pieces that go on the scarf. It was a little bit confusing to start with, but once I kind of got going, it was really easy to see where the things needed to stick. It just did take me a second to kind of figure that out. And then I did choose to use my brushes for this. You could absolutely use your domed foam tools, your flat foam tools, whichever you prefer. I just felt like the brushes were a little bit easier because I wanted a bit of an uneven look just because I feel like 
when you bake cookies, sometimes they're not perfect and that's 100% okay. So this is kind of what I was going for here. So I'm going to do both bodies and both faces very similarly with the same colors. So I have two colors of oxide ink. I have vintage photo and walnut stain and that's what I chose to use for the bodies and the faces. And then for my pinks, which I'm going to blend next, I chose two colors for that as well. I did uh, kitsch flamingo and picked raspberry just because I kind of wanted a lighter color and a darker color just to add a little bit of interest. Um, there's no, you know, rhyme or reason. You can literally do any color palette with this if you wanted to. I just have a tendency towards that kind of pink and gold color palette. I really like it. And then if you throw a little bit of brown in there, like pink and brown look really nice together as well. So there's no, you know, right or wrong way to do this. This is just kind of what I was doing. And hopefully you get some inspiration from it because that's kind of the whole point. But this dyed set did have a lot of cute little embellishments to add to the gingerbread. So I thought that was a lot of fun. And then, of course, here I once again changed my mind and decided that I wanted things to be white glitter cardstock. So we're still they're still going to be white. They're just going to be glittered instead of just flat white. Uh, and that's going to be like the rim on the hat and the little frill on the uh, scarf and the pom pom for the hat and the icing pieces I guess they would be um, and the little dots on her dress and this little piece that goes on her head which I guess is also supposed to be icing so I did cut that out twice so that I'd have those little squiggly lines to go on both ginger like the ginger ginger man and the ginger woman um, so that I could kind of dress them up a bit the same and I just chose to make that white glitter cardstock you can stay with the regular glitter cardstock it doesn't have or regular white cardstock sorry it doesn't have to be the glitter cardstock I just thought that would be a lot of fun because here look at this little dress uh, I don't know maybe it's simple mind simple pleasures kind of thing but I like I just thought this set was so so freaking cute that I had to use it because it, like look at these little squigglies <laughs> Like, who designed said like these? It's just so adorable. So you have a little squiggly that goes on the dress, too, actually, and then some little dots, and then the little squiggles that go on the, like, hands and arm, like, arms and legs, and that kind of just gives you the icing. Now, I'm not a huge... Well, see, I don't mind gingerbread, but I find that gingerbread, when you buy them as the like people, they tend to be really dry cookies. And I am not a huge fan of dry foods as a general rule. That's just kind of, I'm like, I'm just not a fan of how it feels in the mouth. So I don't tend to like food that's really dry. Um, I like ginger cookies. I'm just, you know, I always find that gingerbread men seem to be um, dry and that's not not my preference in a cookie let me know what you guys think do you like gingerbread is that something that you enjoy eating or do you kind of like me you don't really like a, a really dry cookie like let me know what you think because that's just kind of my take on it and then here is the scarf so I did end up choosing to go white and gold for this flat white not the glittery white and then gold for the stripes on the scarf because of course it's stripes. So you literally could have done this in any color. I chose white and gold because I thought that that would be fun for him because he has no other gold on him than the scarf and she has no other gold on her but the bow. So I kind of thought it would be fun to have that one gold element on each of them. And then the frill on the scarf at the end, it's kind of hard to see here. Um, it's white glitter. You'll see all of this when I'm done adhering everything and I hold it up at the end. Uh, it'll make a little more sense because it's kind of difficult to see these tiny pieces here. But there are little lines that show you where these pieces to, are supposed to go. So it's not, you know, terribly difficult. But this scarf did confuse me for a second because I was like, I don't understand how he's supposed to be wearing this. But it, it does make sense. It just... It took me a minute to wrap my mind around it. And then for the faces, I'm doing the exact same thing I did for the figgy pudding. I'm going to inlay those little dots because these are the eyes and then the cheeks as well. I just used a Copic marker to color those in. So I used the 100 Copic marker, which is black, and then RV14 for the cheeks. And then for the mouthpiece, I chose to give them a tongue just because I thought that was really cute. Uh, so I'm going to draw on kind of a tongue shape and then the rest of the mouth will be that same black color just so that it 
you know, looks like you can see a little bit of their tongue and then the rest of their mouth is just dark. Um, don't ask me why. You could give them teeth if you wanted to. I thought that that would be weird for a gingerbread because, you know, but you could. I mean, it wouldn't, maybe it wouldn't be weird. I didn't try it. Maybe it would be neat. I'm not sure. Um, but I just chose to go black with the eyes and then I will bring in a white gel pen later and add some extra detailing on the areas that I felt kind of needed it, like the eyes. Uh, and I will give my little lady gingerbread, um, lashes as well with the white marker later just because I think that's cute it's not necessary by any means and these these don't have to be a man and a woman they could be two two men they could be two ladies they could be children ones like it doesn't matter it completely is up to you um I just thought that I really wanted to use the accessory pieces so I chose to kind of go like with a, a gent and a lady but you could literally make them anything completely up to you and what you prefer and who you're giving it to so this is just kind of what I went with and I just thought see like does not that little tongue just look cute like, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I just had a lot of fun with these. I don't know. It was pretty entertaining to put together once I wrapped my mind around it. And then this, I guess, is supposed to be icing, um, but it's also like her hair. And then I chose to put a little gold bow on top. You could put a pink bow. Um, you could put a white bow. I just chose to do gold. And then I am going to pop it up a little bit so there's some dimension to her. And then for extra interest in that hammer mill piece that's not going to have anything else on it because it's going to have the gingerbread sitting on top of it. I brought in the monoline embossing folder by Spellbinders just because it was new to me and I thought it'd be a lot of fun to add that kind of interesting dimension in it. Um, and because I think when I'm doing this, I like to add something a bit simple to the background so that the, the gingerbread are going to steal the show, right? Because that's kind of my, my goal for that. And I did add a little bit of pink and a little bit of gold splashes to the background just for a little bit of added interest. Um, the picked raspberry was the pink that I used for for that and then this is just a gold liquid ink that I have but everything's always listed and linked down below if you're ever interested in specifics of something I've used and I do try to give multiple options where to purchase it if you want to they are affiliate links so of course I get a small commission if you guys purchase something from them at no extra charge to you it's just tells me that you're enjoying my content enough to want to you know pick up something that I've used or you know you just shop through my link because you're incredibly kind and I greatly appreciate it um, but yeah so it's just kind of why the links are there in case you're ever interested. And then now I'm pretty much just going to start building my card. And for the longest time, I wanted the card to be landscape. And in the end, I chose to make it portrait just because the gingerbread didn't fit well on the landscape card. And then here I really wanted this sentiment to be in two pieces. So I'm kind of, I don't like to cut apart my stamps. I, that's just not something I want to do completely up to you. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just that it's not my preference. So I don't do it. I kind of just creatively mask things with my hand and just remove ink where I don't want it. So that's what I did with this card. I stamped the sentiment out in two different pieces. So you see the bottom one there says holiday season. So the whole sentiment says wishing you a fun holiday season, but I wanted to be able to separate them on the card because it was a very big sentiment to put on such a thin card. So I chose to kind of cut them apart and make them into little labels, which is what I'm doing here. But I needed the sentiment to be separate so that I could easily trim it because they kind of sit together and there would have been no way to trim it into a label with the way that it was. So this is, you can see what I did there. I just kind of stamped down the bottom and I wiped off any extra ink with my finger. Um, I mean, you could bring in a cloth, you could mask it with masking paper or post-it note, whatever works for you. I just find this to be the easiest way to do it. So that's kind of what I've started doing. And then for the sentiment, I did put wishing you a fun up in the top left hand corner, right beside the gentleman uh, gingerbread. And then I'm going to put the rest of the sentiment kind of halfway through the design right near my lady gingerbread. So, I mean, the, this is just because honestly, I couldn't get them. I wanted them to be looking at each other. And that's why I put the heads the way that I did. But I couldn't on the mini slimline do that without either his hat sitting off of the card and then I'd either have to trim it off or I'd have to make it like a bigger envelope um, or she would sit off. So I, I kind of chose to go this way though they're not together um, just because of how the layout looked. I don't think it's a bad layout. I think it turned out really cute. It just wasn't my intention when I started this card. But there's nothing wrong with that. We can pivot as we go through the card anyway, so that's okay. 
So that is what I chose to do. And then for the heads, I wanted to prop them up a little bit. So these are just thin 3D foam squares. And I put that on both of the heads. And you saw me adhere the bodies down with some glue underneath. Once I had them where I wanted them to be, that's why you kind of saw me hold them and then put a little glue underneath. I just really wanted to be able to make sure that they sat exactly where they were and they weren't hanging off the card too much or I'd have to trim them. And I didn't want to do that. I mean, you don't have to. Like I said, you can create your own envelope. I do for some lines anyway because I don't have any envelopes for them, um, but I didn't want to have to. So I kind of just tried to line it up as best I could. Like a little bit of his pom-pom sticks off here, but I can I can do that with the envelope and not worry about it. But yeah, so then I brought in these really pretty gold gems. These are gold sparkle crystals, and I think they're really pretty. They just have like little bits of gold inside of them. And then I brought in my white gel marker or gel pen, and I just kind of went through and added random details. I added eyes, I added a little dot to the cheeks, and then I gave her little lashes because I thought that'd be super cute. And then I added just a touch of a highlight to his hat and her dress. Very, very simple, not necessary if you you don't want to add it that's totally okay I just kind of like how that looks so I tend to do it so but completely up to you I think it's cute either direction and then that is this card I'm going to hold it up here so you can kind of see the difference in the tones like you can see his scarf has the little white tassels at the bottom and that glitter in his hat so just kind of different tones going through this whole card I had a lot of fun making this I hope you guys enjoyed checking it out I can't believe we're already a third of the way through the Christmas series it's just mind-boggling how time flies but that is the card I have for you guys today I hope you enjoyed it leave me a like leave me a comment and consider subscribing if you haven't already I do new videos every Monday and Thursday and every Monday till Christmas will be a Christmas project thank you so much guys and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.